Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to the Casual Puzzler to another video. Today we are talking about my puzzle goals for 2023 and I'm also going to share some of my goals from 2022 and how I stacked up to them. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more lifestyle goals, let me know. I would love to share those as well, but only if you're really interested. I would love to know if you have any puzzle goals this year, so let me know down in the comments. And we do have a giveaway today, and I don't have the physical giveaway item because it is a gift card for Art and Fable. It is for $25 from them, so thank you so much. This one, unfortunately, is just for US subscribers because it is in US currency. I had been enjoying their puzzles for years now since they only had 500 piece counts, and one of my favorites of all time is called um, east of the sun west of the moon i moved it oh it's at the top east of the sun west of the moon i've done that at least four or five times absolutely love that one so if you are us and want to enter please make sure to do the things down below and we are just going to get into my puzzle goals for 2023 so puzzle goal number one is puzzle count this year my goal was to do 100 puzzles i did 104 according to my excel sheet but i feel like i'm missing a few i know when i was looking at it earlier the puzzle count didn't include that big box set that I did it was like eight puzzles all in one they're all like three to five hundred pieces I only included it as one puzzle but I did eight so it's definitely more than a hundred definitely beat that goal super excited about it uh, it was really fun throughout the year to just see like how many away I was from that goal how many I needed to do each week to get to that goal I really did track it every single week and it was just fun to just gradually get closer to it. So I was really happy with that. Last year, in case you're curious, I did 71 puzzles. So I definitely increased my puzzle count. Super happy with that number to do over 100. And this year or 2023, I do want to have 120 puzzles. So increasing it by a little bit. Um, I do want to increase my puzzle piece count, which will be goal number two. Um, but I do think I can easily get 120, especially since about 80 of those puzzles that I did this year was since I graduated. So the first half of the year didn't do too many because I was in school and doing my capstone and graduating as all that stuff. And then I graduated and just like did a ton of puzzles, which was really awesome. So definitely think I'll be able to hit my 120 mark. Maybe stretch goal would be like, I'm not even gonna say 150, but we'll just say that's a stretch goal. 120 would be amazing, 100 would be amazing. But I also need to take into account that goal number two is piece count. Now, I really haven't had a goal for piece count. I've just been doing whatever puzzle suits my fancy. I tend to go towards the lower piece counts because one, I don't have a ton of space. Two, I have cats. I like to do it in one sitting and I really can't keep them away from my puzzle area. And three, I just like having quick, fun little puzzles. I like spending like maybe two hours in the evening doing a quick puzzle and call it a day versus having it out on my table for days and days. So with that in mind, I do want to increase my piece count next year, especially since we are purchasing a new place. We can have a new setup for my puzzle room. This is all stuff me and Dave has talked about in our goals for our next house. And so we do want to find a bigger puzzle studio for me to work in and something that can be completely cat free. So that way I can do those larger counts and then keep them up. It's a, I'm just excited for it. So goal number two, my piece count goal is 100,000 pieces totally doable for me. So this year I did 68,000. Last year I did 52,000. And so it's definitely increased quite a bit since last year. 100,000 seems like a big jump, but not really because again, I was in school all of last year and I was in school at the beginning of this year. So the majority of the pieces I did this year, I did in the second half of the year. Um, I did 52,000 pieces since May. For, and again, in total, I did 68,000. So definitely did the majority towards the end of the year and I think I can do the hundred piece thousand piece count so fingers crossed but I am actually setting a goal for that this year goal number three is to kind of increase my piece count per puzzle I again stay more towards those smaller piece counts but I do want to do some larger ones just because one I love the images two it just gives me more of a challenge it is not challenging to do a 500 piece one even like the crazy difficult ones like I did that heathered hill one this year I thought it was gonna be super hard it really didn't take me too long so I'd love to I feel like I feel like for the larger piece counts, I'd get my money's worth a little bit more. You know, I 
can spend a little bit more time with it versus just like flying through it and then it's like next. So I do want to do some more 1500 to 2000 piece counts next year. Um, I do have a goal to do one a month. So I would love to do again a, a 15 piece or 1500 piece or higher next year each month, which I think would be doable. You know, it's doable. It's a little bit of a challenge each month and it just branches out to different images. There are a couple that I have in mind already. I do already own maybe four or five 2000 piece counts that I want to do like at the beginning of the year. Um, but in general, I've been really eyeing some Pintu 1500 pieces. They also, they go up to 4,000, but I like the idea of like them being hung on a wall with the larger piece counts and they have one called 160 cats. I'll put it here so you can see. Looks very doable for a larger piece count and I think it'd be so much fun. And then there are a couple larger piece counts from Schmidt that I've been eyeing. So those are the two that I'm thinking about like purchasing next year. But in general, I want to do some larger piece counts and do one per month. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might have to alter that a little bit for the months that we are in temporary housing. Maybe it'll have to be dedicated 1500 pieces just because that's how much my puzzle table supposedly can hold. Puzz so goal number four is I do want to complete my 6,000 piece Clementoni puzzle. It's called Downtown. Again, I'll put a picture here on the screen. My issue with this one is unlike other puzzle brands where you have a larger puzzle, it's like broken up into segments. It's not. So it is like a own 6,000 piece full size jigsaw puzzle with all the pieces together, which kind of makes me a little bit nervous because I've never done anything that big. Um, but I think it would be a fun challenge. It might be something that I only do a little bit every now and again. So depending on our living situation, I may be able to keep it up for like a, an extended amount of time, or I might just have to dedicate a lot of time to it at once and We'll see. Goal number five is to continue my Around the World series. I have been loving that series so much. I fell off a little bit, but I have showed a few other brands within the mix. It just hasn't had its own dedicated video like Pintu is from Taiwan. And then we have the Casterland, which is from Poland. So I have done some Around the World videos, but I definitely want to get back into it because I have so many beautiful puzzles from all over. And so I want to do at least two a month. So for next year, I'm gonna definitely feature more brands from all over. So again, if you are in a different country than me, please let me know some brands that I should keep my eye out on. I have a whole dedicated playlist if you are new here about puzzles from all over the world. So let me know which brands I should think of. Um, and then finally, we have my final goal, which in general, I just want to feature smaller brands and discover new brands. So I love featuring like the bigger brands like Ravensburger and Schmidt and New York Puzzle Company, but there are so many such nice small independently owned companies that are doing great things. They have beautiful artwork and I'm just so intrigued by them. I think the reason that I typically don't go that route is because of price point because I mean, I could get three New York Puzzle Companies to say one soonest puzzle. I feel like a lot of it is price, so I do want to just be mindful of the puzzles that I'm taking into my collection, and I would love to support smaller brands and feature them on my channel. That way you guys can see other brands out there. It's one of my favorite things about the puzzle world, or at least for this channel, is I just like to review puzzle brands. And I would just love to feature some that are totally taking up my Instagram. Instagram is such a a risky thing for me to look at because I feel like every single day another brand shows up on my feed and I'm like oh my goodness so I would love to find some more smaller brands and feature them on my channel. Two brands already that are on my like the top of my wishlist video. I do have that whole wishlist video but I would love to try Grateful House and Tanya Wicks. Those two are definitely on my list. Um, I did purchase one I did purchase a couple Tanya Wicks that aren't here yet I'm really, I'm very excited about it. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, I would love to know some of your puzzle goals down below. Again, let me know if you're interested in learning about my other goals. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Also, thank you to Art and Fable for providing the giveaway and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.